CityWorks Expo is a collaborative, co-creative, and multidisciplinary idea exchange and festival conference that happens each fall in Roanoke, Virginia. By day, attendees are immersed in thought-provoking presentations, riveting performances, and engaging dialogue. By night, the conference continues with after-hours networking opportunities during street festivals, parties, and musical events. To learn more about Expo, visit cityworksexpo.com. Expo 2014 was made possible by these fine sponsors. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I started the academy three years ago. A lot of people believe that my journey began um, during that time, but actually my journey began when I went into education. I work in education. I'm a guidance coordinator in Roanoke City Public Schools. I began at Patrick Henry High School. Patrick Henry High School. <laughs> My story actually begins with these African-American males that I work with. At the beginning of every school year, we would have to meet in the cafeteria, and we would discuss testing who was at the bottom quartile. And it seems like there was a common thread every single, every single year. It was always the African-American males. And being a native Roanoke, I grew up here, the only time I left Roanoke was to go to college. And I returned to Roanoke. And I believe I'm divinely planted here for a reason. I took it upon myself, I said, look, there has to be an answer. At the same time, the school was looking for an answer. So they said, look, we have 14 young men that we want you to work with. I said, great, I'll work with them. We got together, and out of that 13, nine ended up going to a four-year university Two grad school, one is embarking upon law school at this time. But here's the thing that's important and why I actually started the academy. We were leaving out of a session one day and a young man came to me and he said, listen, when I'm with you, Mr. Rose, I feel like I can conquer the world. He said, but when I leave you, when I go home, the guys that look like you, that's your age, they're not talking about what you're talking about. They're not dressing the way you're dressing, and they're definitely not talking about trying to move forward and become a leader. And then it really hit me. This thing is about community, culture, communicating, and then there's a shift which brings forth leaders. And that's why I started the academy. The primary goal of the academy is to cultivate vision, to develop a successful, productive young men that are servant leaders. And I want you to take note of that. Not just leaders, servant leaders. You serve first. You don't look to be served, you serve first. Then it goes into a pattern of leadership. A pattern of leadership. Our motto, we exist, therefore we succeed. People have asked over and over, what does that mean? The mere fact that I exist means I will give 100% every single day of my life to do and to be and to build up around me to, like I said, to cause that cultural shift. We're based on four cardinal principles, family, education, community, and perseverance. Family is key because you wouldn't believe when I would work with those young men, we would always talk about fathers. And I had some of the roughest football players. One, a kid is about to go to the pros right now. He would cry like a baby when you mentioned the word father to him. And I realized how important family is and how that's the crux of the matter. And if it's missing, how do you put the pieces into place so that they can stand strong enough without the backing that they may need? Why is it important? Exposure is the key to maximizing your potential. I had a young man one time. He was having a lot of problems in class. And he came into my office, he walked into my office, and I asked him, I said, look, you're an intelligent kid. What, what, what is the problem? What's really going on with you? The more he began to talk, I realized he hadn't been exposed to anything. So I said, listen, have you ever been on a vacation? Now, I had to look at it from his standpoint, not from the lenses that I looked through. So I said, have you ever been on a vacation? No. This is a kid that's 18 years old, <laughs> 18. 
never been to the beach. I said, you never been to the beach? He said, my mother's been to the beach, but she's never taken me. Then I start to realize, I'm like, okay, you haven't been exposed. So all you see is the mountains that are around you, the streets that you may walk on, divided as they may, they may be. And because of that, you function as if this is life, this is nothing else, there's nothing else to life other than living right here. Exposure is the key. Developing leaders so that they can become agents of change amongst their peers and the community. Here's something that's very big, talent versus character. I always tell my guys, do not <laughs> allow your talent to take you somewhere your character can't keep you. I want you to, I want you really to get this. Do not take, do not allow your talent to take you somewhere your character cannot keep you. We look in the news right now with the NFL. We, 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 it's countless things you can look at in politics all across the world. People with great talent, but they don't have the character to keep them in position. The character is fragile. So what we work on, like I said, is, is, is becoming servant leaders, character enhancement. To complete the circle, something that's very big, the circle. I realized when that young man told me, when I go home, the men that's your age that look like you don't talk like you. I said, wait a minute. There's a gap. There's a gap here. <laughs> you have home. You have school. But where's the community piece? Because what he's telling me is, I live at home. That's okay. I come to school and I'm with you and I feel like I can rule the world. But when I go out in the community, it does not resemble what leadership is. So I said, there needs to be a full circle. We need to connect the circle to close the gap, as I just said. I would like for you to watch a video. I want to introduce you to five of our young men. Hello, my name is Blake Barnes, and I'm 17 years old, and I'm in the 11th grade at William Fleming High School. I enjoy being a part of the Roanoke Area Youth Substance Abuse Coalition and the Roanoke NAACP Youth Council. While being a part of the Renaissance Academy, I have learned the value of community service. My future plans are to attend the University of Richmond or the University of Virginia and major in political science or business administration. Hello, my name is Brandon Birch. I'm 12 years old. I'm in the seventh grade. I currently attend Jane Madison Middle School. My favorite sport is soccer, and what I learned from the Renaissance Academy is that all answers lie within me, and I want to grow up, I want to be an architect. Hi, my name is Julian Mack. I'm 13 years old. I'm in ninth grade and I attend Salem High School. What I enjoy doing, doing is wrestling and eating Chinese food. What I've learned in the Renaissance Academy is to be financially responsible. What I, what I want to do when I grow up is study in major psychology. Hello, my name is Nicholas Andrews. I am 11 years old. I attend Lucy Addison Middle School. I enjoy playing football with friends, riding my bike with friends, hanging with family, and playing video games. My favorite NFL team is the Miami Dolphins. What I learned from the Renaissance Academy is how to challenge yourself, set goals for your life, and touring colleges to see what, see what college you might want to attend. I like to go to Virginia Tech University, and I like to major in math. Hello, my name is Xavier Johnson. I am 12 years old. I am in the seventh grade. I go to Lucy Addison Middle School. I enjoy tennis, soccer, the Dallas Cowboys, and comic books. Uh, what I have learned from the Renaissance Academy is how to be a respectable, outspoken, and not shy young man. What I plan to major in in college is law. I, be, I plan to become a lawyer. Hi. Ah. My name is Ethan Hilton, and I'm a graduate of William Seminole High School in the Renaissance County. I graduated high school in the top 5% of my class and with a GPA of 4.12. In the future, I plan on attending the University of Virginia and studying chemical engineering in the School of Engineering. Through it all, I learned from the Renaissance Academy that community service is an important part of being a man and a good sense in my community. And when I go off to college, I hope to learn how to give back more to my community and know it to better. Who I'd like to thank is my parents and Mr. Rhodes 
for pushing me throughout my last years in high school, and my parents especially for pushing me through middle school. The young man that you saw, he's actually at UVA now. He received a full scholarship, and he's majoring in chemical engineering right now. I developed a model, and this is what I based the academy on. And I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. The eight tenets of success. Character enhancement, as I've already been discussing with you, we base it through community service, college prep and tours, career development, concerted cultivation, critical thinking skills. I always talk to them about being thinkers. Do not, I, I, on a daily basis, I have students come in and they want me to tell them what they need to do. I'm like, no, I need you to become a thinker. You need to be able to say, look, I'm a leader and I'm a thinker. I can come up with what I need to come up with when I need it. Also, communication skills. I think that's a big piece. Last thing, crisis management. Because our young people are in what we may not believe to be a crisis. We may say, that's something very small. Why is that bothering you? But to them, that may be monumental. It may be a crisis. So we, we deal with crisis management also. Here are just some pictures of the times that we go out for community service. We've, we've worked with Salvation Army, at the rescue mission. And you see, this is the first thing I want to show you as far as pictures because I feel like this, hey, if you can go out and pick up trash, if you can clean a window, you will be less likely to want to throw something on the ground. You will be less likely to allow your friends to throw things on the ground or to um, you know, dismantle and, and, and destroy property. So the community service piece is a big part of them becoming servant leaders. The college tours, we've, 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 uh, you see pictures here of Old Dominion, Georgetown University. Whenever we go on tours, I try to take them to a school that's an elitist school. I take them to a historical black college, and then I'll take them to the a middle of the road school because I think it's important for them to see what is it like to ebb and flow on all different types of campuses. Um, you may say you want to go to LSU because you see a great football team or Virginia Tech because of the football team, but when you get on a campus with uh, 20,000 people, how does that affect you? You know, it's important for them to know that and to see that. And like I said, this thing is about a cultural shift. So keep that in mind, career development. We have people come in, um, and the great thing that I wanna say right now, we've forged a relationship with, some of my friends have helped me out, we forged a relationship with the Virginia Tech Medical School where we will be meeting on the campus at, at the Tech Medical School from this point going forward, also with ANU, um, American National University. It's important that they are in an educational environment because like I said, when, when you talk to a person and they tell you, well, we're at home or my environment doesn't you know, resemble college. Well, I wanna put you in that environment. I want it to just to be second nature. I don't want you to get to high school and get to your senior year like I had a young man with a 3.86 GPA and I said, where are you planning on going to college? He said, we don't go to college. I said, who? who when you say we, are you talking about people or are you talking about you? He said, my family. My mother said, I, she needs me to work. He was afraid, the bottom line. He had never, no one in his family had ever been to college. So my attempts is to put them on a college campus to expose them to different careers. You can see right here, there, we're, we're working with what's called a reality check. And you can see some of the guys, they, they were lobbying like, look, I need money back. You know, they go through and they have to pay bills in, in a big room. They're given a check according to the career that they choose. And then they have to go through life and they have to go in a grab bag and pull out what could possibly be a problem. And you know, one kid, he pulled out the grab bag, he, he ended up with triplets. <laughs> and he said, I don't want kids. And I'm like, you have them. <laughs> so get your money ready. So it, 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 it taught them a great lesson. You can see the one in the middle, he really, after he got to the end, he was bankrupt. So he said, no, it's the lady back with those tires. I'm going to get money back for my tires. You know, so the thing is, it's a great thing, you know, with the, the uh, career development piece. As I get to the end here, what do you see right there? What is that? Does anyone know? A seed. That's a seed. Now, you can see that as a seed, or you can see it for the potential that's in that seed. It's simple. You can say, well, it's just a seed in the palm of a hand. Or you can look at it because that's a sequoia tree. It's amazing. Look at it one more time. From there, the palm of the hand to something that's overwhelmingly huge. 
That's what I, that's what I see when my young men walk in. I, you know, I, I talk to them about the vision that we have to have and letting them know sight is for the present. Vision is for being in the now, but living beyond today. That's my presentation concerning the academy. And what I, what I need you to know is this. We exist, therefore we succeed. And we will be around. And I want you to know that I'm extending now to third and fourth and fifth grade level. That's where they build prison cells based on those levels of education. We're there to eradicate any decision that could possibly be made that would be a problem. Thank you.